everyone. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, today I want to craft something very different with you guys. If it's your first time here, thank you so much for joining me. My name is Claudia and welcome to White Sugar Designs. So what I have today is a thrift store buy, a little lamp I found at the Goodwill store, uh, discount store, and it cost me $8, I want to say. It was brand new. It had the covering and I took it off. And this almost feels very plasticky. Yeah, it actually almost, it is plastic. <laughs> I thought it was fabric. But um, if you follow me on Instagram, you saw that I posted a altar lamp shade. I'll show it to you here. And that little lamp shade is hanging above my uh, desk where I sit on my computer, I'm in front of my computer. And I had bought uh, both of them because I wasn't sure, well, I liked them both and I didn't know what what I was gonna do with each one, all I knew is that I wanted to alter a little desk clamp, and then I found the other one and I go, oh my gosh, I have the kit, which is just basically a bulb with this uh, cord, and then I just put the lampshade like this from, you know, so the cord comes in here and then it, sh it hangs like that. Anywho, today I'm going to be working on this little guy and it's a, a different technique. And I actually was inspired, believe it or not, by a journal that I saw. Someone made it, someone made this journal and her name is, uh, it was a journal by Yana's Crafting and she's here in YouTube. And I saw in which the whole point of uh, when I saw it, I thought, oh my gosh, I have to make a journal like that, and I will. This is why I bought the fabric, and then because of that, afterwards, I bought the lamp, and I'm like, I can use the exact same technique that she used to make a journal cover um, to cover this cute little lampshade, and that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to be using the gold I think that gold will stand out. Let's see. So this is the fabric that I'm gonna be using. Yes, I think you'll be able to see it. It'll be more visible than this little silver one. There's three different ones. Silver, I think the gold, I, I wanted the gold, so I'm gonna stick with the gold. And what I'm going to do is, so I had bought, like I said, the fabric, and these are from Joann's. Uh, I found this, and this is more of a, it's the really large bolt. So it's more like for um, maybe pillows or not outdoors, I don't think. Um, but it's to create, uh, let's say, uh, placemats or maybe cover your chairs or pillows it feels like canvas versus this is like you know that the typical um, quilting fabric so I found this one and it was I love I just love this color combination and so I went after fabric that had the same colors in here so there is the orange and this is this little brown gold, you know, mustardy color. And then there is this turquoise, but I wanted something that would pop. And, you know, you can see a little bit over here. And I also, uh, I had this one, a uh, lighter turquoise. And then this little floral that kind of has the same type of colors. And, uh, I don't know, kind of a neutral. I picked this one to kind of break up all the colors and all the patterns. And so I'm gonna use these fabrics and all I'm gonna do is cut several strips of all the different colors. And uh, I'm going to star, it's gonna be like a weaving type of thing, technique. And I'm going to start, it's gonna be hard to do it without cutting the, the uh, elastic first because I gotta go in and out. And so let me see if I can do it 
Um, the hard part is that there's these two other uh, elastic colors here. So I'm going to try and make these ones, yeah, stick them like this so then I can just weave the gold in and out and I'm not going to tie it. I'm just going to kind of leave it loose here and I can probably use a little paper clip uh, like this one here just to kind of hold it together and then I'm going to tie it at the very end. This is my first time doing this but I know it's going to work because it's kind of a simple concept. So okay. Let's see how everything just kind of comes undone here. But, oh, and it came undone. All right, let's try this again. Maybe I'll use a different type of clip. I'm gonna use this and I'm gonna clip it right here. and then I'm just gonna go it's gonna take a little while because again I don't want to have to cut the um, what the elastic until I know how much I'm going to need didn't take that long so there I cut a little extra I ended up with 12 loops now I can put this stuff away and I can concentrate on this and I don't want to see the knot on the outside so I'm going to do it on the inside I am pulling so that um, the elastic is kind of tight of course I should have an extra set of hands that would help and let's see it's just gonna hold the fabric in place that's all it's going to do and I could get technical and start measuring the distance between each one of the loops. But I think I'm just gonna uh, eyeball it and just kind of try and keep, you know, kind of the same distance between each of the bars. And so I can look on the top like this. Okay, I kind of just move the elastic so that because you're going in and out around the line on the outside in relation to the one on the inside they're not going to be parallel to each other they're not going to be you know the bottom one and the top one are not going to line up correctly they're going to be offset so uh instead of it's kind of hard to see but the ones inside here they don't um they're not straight, they're going kind of sideways. And I want the outside, because obviously that's the important part of the lines to be straight. So I kind of use the pleats of the plastic to kind of guide myself so that the outside lines are going to be straight. The inside, no one's gonna see, so that's not gonna be a problem. So if you're gonna try this technique, that's the one suggestion I have. It's make sure that the lines on the outside are straight and they're not going vertically. I've also cut all, well, not all, but I didn't wanna cut 
more than what I think I would need. So this is your typical, I think it's 54 inches wide uh, fabric. So this, for example, I bought a quarter of a yard. I left it folded and then I just cut about one inch, yeah, about an inch strips, inch wide strips. And then if I need to cut more, then I will cut more. But I want to start with uh, the fabric that had all the colors, which is obviously the reason why I got it. Now, if there is a better way, let's see if I can put this here. What's going to move? I don't think that's... But, um, oh, wait, let's see if this is going to work. My little... Uh, oil infuser <laughs> I just don't it's harder to if you if the base is sitting straight flat on the table so I'm gonna go basically uh, in and out of each of the goal lines so so that one's under over under whoa over if I wasn't doing this in the on video I can leave it on the lamp itself and that would help, but because I'm sharing with you guys. So this is like a basket weaving, right? You're gonna go under, over, under, over, and then your next row, it's gonna go the opposite, over, under, over, under. And uh, I am at the end and I'm going to go ahead and cut and then what I'll do is I'm going to try and keep all the seams on one side. So when I glue, actually you can't, uh, I guess let's, I, I can try, but because this is a cone, you know, that might vary, but I think it should work. So I'm going to pull low. And obviously the fact that this is a cylinder uh, type shape the fabric wants to pull up and that's okay we will fix all of that with our glue when it's time to glue in all the pieces uh, joining the the centers right okay so that's under this would be over okay so now i'm gonna go the opposite so i'm gonna go over no uh under here over yes and I'm going to just keep repeating this process until I get to the end. Over, under, over, under, uh, alternating with each piece of the fabric. All I wanna know is how much fabric I'm going to need uh, to go around as the cone shape keeps going up. And then make sure your fabric is not twisted, like I just did that here. If you have a lazy Susan, that will do the trick because then the whole thing can spin. See, under, over, under, over. And then once I get to the end, then I'll just cut because it just seems like it's easier um, to do it that way. Push your fabric down and we're gonna keep uh, adding more I'm not gonna leave the fabrics you know the width of it I'm going to add a lot of fabric so that the fabric itself will kind of fold like this as you go so I'm going to be smooshing it down like that so there's definitely gonna be a lot of um, space to add lots of fabric more than one strip of each color. And you know, it'd be a great idea, which I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna use uh, pins to pin the edge of each one of the strips so that they don't move. And then I can keep track of what's over, under, over, under. under over so I start here
and you can always move the fabric um, I'm sorry, the elastic. Once we're done, obviously the elastic is just tight, so I can rearrange it if for some reason something moves. So that's the end of that one. And obviously, again, because this is a cylinder shape, um, the pieces are going to get smaller and smaller as I go up. But once I get a few of these going, I want to start pushing down because um, if I cut a piece that is this, you know, skinny here, as I put down, it's going to want to stretch. So it's a good idea just to start pushing everything down and put it in place as you go up so that the pieces, uh, the circumference of each piece will be the right size. like I've covered the whole thing but as you can tell I only have two four six colors and it's kind of I mean that does look super cute I think um, but I want it to be more it feels fuller almost like you know a, a type of quilting so I'm going to keep pushing things down now that I don't have to be at the bottom and then just going from you know from wherever I scrunch everything down I think I don't need to have that other piece. So all I'm gonna do is I'm going to kinda go around and start pushing everything down and making more room for more fabric. And because I have cut a little bit extra, if I feel like the fabric is a little too tight and it doesn't want to go down. I can loosen it up a little bit and get a little give. As I keep going down, I'm trying to repeat the same pattern I started with so that there's a little bit of, you know, symmetry to the whole thing. Not that it has to be, but that's just my preference. You know, there's so many colors, but yet you can definitely see that there's going to be a pattern uh, once we are done. That's gonna give me, I believe, 13 strips. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. And then I will see how, once I start organizing them and really, really, um, you know, maybe doing even a little bit of a folding and using the elastic to kind of secure everything, um, then I can start seeing the pattern coming through and you will see how uh, full the shade is gonna start looking. But there's gonna be, uh, I'm gonna have to do a lot of rearranging and moving and that would make the whole video super long, but I wanted you to kind of get the idea of how I am going to approach this part so that I can definitely see all the colors, all the fabrics, and I don't mind, ow, ooh, wow, that one surprised me, sorry. <laughs> um, you can see all the colors, and uh, what I was gonna say is, uh, I don't mind the 
uh, fabric fraying and all those little loose uh, bits and pieces of the fabric. So as you can kind of see, as you move things down, how nice it's going to look. And that is the look that I am after. But again, it's going to take, um, you know, a little time for me to arrange everything to make sure all the color shows go all the way around move everything down and uh, and then use some glue to secure everything oops I'm hiding a piece right there yeah so anyways I will go ahead and do all of that and I think I'm just gonna come back uh, once everything is nice and neat and tucked in and trimmed and glued down, I will come back and show you how cute uh, the lampshade is going to turn out. I am all done and it looks so pretty. I really like how this turned out, but let me tell you two things. I ended up adding two separate strings because I ran out of the gold um, elastic uh, ribbon but I felt like the more strands I had the better it kind of held the fabric as I went around uh, because it just kind of you know it was a much tighter weave uh, having more elastics uh, across so I have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15 um, strings going up and down. And uh, I just basically wrapped it around and tied it. And then it took me a while. It really did took me a while, but that's a little bit of my perfectionism, which I know is not necessarily a good thing, but uh, you know, just kind of arranging all the the colors and the bits and pieces of fabric going around just so that I make sure I sew everything. And for me, like this right here, this specific spot looks super nice because again, you can see all the fabrics, nothing is tucked in underneath something else. So be prepared if this is a project that you want to try. Uh, it did take me a while to kind of spread things out. Um, I the only glue I used and you can kind of see this one which I will have to fix where the two pieces of fabric joint I just overlapped them and put glue in between so there is no sewing I think I'm gonna go back and use my hot glue gun and then kind of you know maybe glue a few of these pieces in place because I mean obviously I'm moving it so everything's moving but once it's in place in your lamp everything should be uh, stay pretty much put together and so I'm gonna just kind of assemble this so you can kind of see I will have photos at the end uh, once I you know I turn the light on and everything it looks really cute uh, definitely a decorative piece during the day at night it does have a certain glow to it uh, because the the light bulb is yellow it's a little bit of the yellowish plus the colors of the fabric but overall I am very happy with how it turned out I uh, I have lots of lights here in the in in my craft room but this one just add definitely lots of color in uh, pretty patterns uh, so it's going to adorn my desk so I hope you liked it I'll have photos uh, all the fabrics were from Joann's and the lamp was from the thrift store so that's pretty much all the materials this elastic gold um, ribbon if you call it and I use liquid stitch to kind of Keep everything in place that's it so ask if you have any questions let me know ask me and I will do my best to answer so I hope you enjoy this little kind of uh, home decor craft project until next time take care